Hello, I'm Rhys Manigan. I am the um, director, writer, producer, um, editor of Pine, which turned out to be my sixth independent feature film that I released in October 31st, 2021. So here is the audio commentary to talk about how I made the film, what went on behind the scenes, the ideas, etc. So yeah, let's guess crack on with this uh, audio commentary. So Pine um, was inspired by many horror films that we pretty much see today. Babadook, uh, The Witch, Hereditary, Midsummer, uh, Us, Get Out. Um, basically slow burn, psychological, dark horror films that, you know, it's more about what's in the mind rather than, you know, violence and gore and, you know, because most people nowadays prefer obviously horror films like Friday the 13th and Texas Chainsaw Massacre and everything like that you know slasher dark gory films but I wanted to do a horror feature for a while and obviously this was my last film I made in my 20s because now I'm 30 and uh, I really wanted to uh, make something you know dark and horror and you know something very psychological and suspenseful and evil and you know just something that really could twist the mind of these uh you know th this story and so um pine came into my brain when i pretty much was inspired by watching joker and dr sleep in 2019 because you know joker is a very character study film and dr sleep is about this you know supernatural thing about the powers and you know you know about you know how do you control those powers what are those powers for you know and um you know, making films about characters with powers, it's always about, oh, they want to discover where those powers come from and was it family related and, you know, is it biological, is it DNA, is it all that stuff, you know. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something very different with the whole I have powers genre, um, which was, you know, about this young girl called Penelope that, you know, she has these powers, but we don't know where it's come from. We don't know if it is family related. We don't know if it's, you know, uh, this power that, you know, is it, is it, you know, is it an illness? Is it, you know, is it a gift? Is it a curse? Is it, um, you know, meant to be there? Is it not meant to be there? Did she catch it off somebody else? You know, that's the question. And, you know, and I like the fact that we don't explain it. We don't talk about what goes on. It's just, she has these powers. We don't know where she's got them from. She does want to understand how she's got them, but we don't dive into that. This is not a backstory film where, you know, they search in their backstory and everything like that. Because although most films sometimes are like that, are pretty good, sometimes it's just always the searching and the backstory and all oh, this and just too much explaining. And you're watching this movie, but it just feels more like you're reading a book, you know. And I didn't want that. I just wanted the story to kick off straight away to say, right, here is the story. There's a young girl. She's got powers. She's got them for some reason. We don't know how. Don't know why. And she's got to find a way to control these powers. And she's also trying to find out if she's a good person or a bad person with these powers. And, you know, what it, it, the explanation is, you know, if she does use them for good, can she use them for good? If she use them for bad, how she can use them for bad, you know? And, you know, that's what she's trying to find out in herself. So we really didn't want to dive into so much of the backstory of this, of everything, and do all this explaining. And otherwise, it just would have been such a boring film. We just wanted to crack on, well, sorry, I, because obviously I, I don't really have, like, you know, people with me on this one, but I, I just wanted to crack on with the story and say, right, here's the story about this young girl, has these powers, don't know how, but her experience is to find out what does she want to do with these powers. And, uh, and so it starts off with, obviously, we find out that she's just been, you know, her parents have just been killed and she's just been attacked by this, um, by this uh, person who, who is not a person. You know, is she a witch? Is she a demon? We don't know. That's another thing we don't explain. The, the characters of the, the beings of the unknown. Uh, again, we don't find out their backstory. They're just a group of uh, things that live in the forest. And they obviously want Penelope's powers for their own personal reasons. And the personal reason is because one of their uh, members is dying. And they think they're the Penelope pa Penelope's powers, sorry, uh, which she calls Pine. Uh, obviously, because she talks about the whole sense of Pine. Um, they think it's a cure for the members, uh, for their member. Um, but obviously, you know, as you find out throughout the film, it wasn't meant to be. So Pine, um, 
this location we filmed, this was actually at um, near Chingford. Uh, it's a little forest area that's not too far from Epping. It's literally just at the edge of Epping. And uh, we had this, like the location, we filmed in pretty much one location throughout the entire week. We actually filmed this from a Monday to Friday. Um, and the reason we filmed it so quickly, not only because was it filmed in one week because of one location, it was also filmed uh, in one week because... Um, we were supposed to be filming this in 2020, but of course, a little thing called COVID got in the way and uh, re pretty much wrecked all the filming schedule and everything like that. So unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. So Pine was on hold um, and was and was still going to be a 2020, 2021 released movie. But the question of when we was going to film it to get it out for 2021 was a mystery for us. So we had it on hold and then luckily when we finally got the chance to go film and I said to the guys, right, we need to film this in one week. It's mostly going to be in one location, which is this beautiful Chingford Forest that we used and uh, we finally managed to get it out and I was so happy with it. I was just so happy that we finally got it done. And the fact that I finally still reached over the 40 minute limit to make a feature film was worth it. So I suppose I better talk about some of the actors in the project. Um, right, as you can see, the old man there is Steve Crawshaw, who is a legend, and I've worked with him quite a few times um, on The Crappers, and I've worked with him on The Ones of Alice. Um, you know, he's a fantastic actor. I love working with Steve. He's really hard to book, though, because he lives very far away from London. Um, but when he does get uh, on board to do his scenes, he is fantastic. And... You know, Steve really wanted to be part of the project, and I was very happy to have him on board. He was really, really amazing. And here we have, of course, the amazing Jaden Marsden, who I absolutely love working with. Jaden is a fantastic actor. Um, worked with him on um, the Shining Fan film that we did. He played Dick Halloran, and he, you know, he's just such a humble, fun loving, funny guy, great actor, you know. Just such a wonderful person to be around. Very funny. We have a laugh. And um, he's just got such a great character about him. You know, he's just such a fantastic actor. And I really wanted him to be part of this project. And, uh, you know, him playing Jackson, was he was always in my mind. And um, when he said he was happy to do it, I was very glad. Uh, and amazingly, we managed to get him to, to, uh, to be part of the film. But even though he wasn't actually with the actors on the time, we managed to to edit it really well so i was really happy about that because it does look like he's actually there with the actors that bit because we filmed at the same location so it's perfect and anna silverstry as well who plays um one of the characters there anna is a really good friend of mine as well uh sammy simmons is there as well sammy plays uh you know cricket gear so again sammy was another car uh, guy that i really wanted to work with in the feature he, you know, he played villains and stuff in my other films, like, you know, played uh, Michael Hare, and I really wanted him to come back and play uh, another character to show how good of an actor he was. And I've worked with him many times, you know, he was in The Donkey and uh, other stuff. And, you know, I just, he was always in my mind to play cricket, you know, when I was writing this. And I said to him, you know, I've got this role for you if you're interested. But he loves working with me. He said to me that I'd, I would love to, to, you know, to to do anything you do, really, because he always does. And uh, as soon as I said to him, Oh, you got a role here. It's cricket. He was like, I'm in. <laughs> so, so Anna Jackson, um, uh, sorry, Anna Jaden, um, Sammy, and Steve were definitely written for the role for the film. But I didn't know who was going to play Penelope. I really actually didn't have only one in mind. And I had loads of actresses audition for the role. Um, Maria, who I've worked with before on Looking Glass, you know, she auditioned for the role. And um, to be honest, you know, casting new actresses always worries me because. You know, casting any new actor worries me because I always worry about how reliable they are and everything. Um, but Maria, I, I know anyway, so she was happy to do it. And um, so she got the role as Penelope. Um, not just because she was reliable, but, you know, because she could play the role pretty well. So uh, everyone was uh, fantastic in this, especially. Um, and the main villain of the film, which we will talk about soon, uh, when she pops up, uh, she was definitely written for the role, Rihanna, who plays... Uh, the main villain and you know Rihanna was definitely in my head to write this role and I've wanted to work with Rihanna for, for a very long time uh, we've we've known each other um, for quite a few years but we've never had a chance to work together yet never and, and when Pine uh, was getting written I immediately was like I have got to get her to play the main villain so we'll talk about when she gets there definitely about her performance 
So obviously the name cricket, let me just explain this. Originally Pine was inspired by um, Pinocchio. I did want to try to make a Pinocchio adaptation, um, you know, because obviously I've done Alice in Wonderland, I've done Peter and the Wolf, and I really wanted to go ahead and do uh, a Pinocchio kind of film. And I did have a script written, which was Pinocchio, but unfortunately none of the actors wanted to do it. They said, oh, you know, I don't really want to do this. I want to do something original. I don't want to base anything on a fairy tale. I want to do something better. Um, no one liked the script. No one liked the script. So I thought, right, okay, I'll change it. And then I thought, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and do a horror. So when I started writing this really dark horror, which, by the way, this Pine script was much darker than the original Pinocchio script I had, people were like, I really want to do it. So now I know that the way to attract actors to do a script is if I write something very dark and twisted. And here we go. There there we go. Rihanna with uh, fabulous shoes there coming through the muddy woods. We had to film this in a very uh, sort of mucky day. But there's Rihanna there who plays the main villain. She's fantastic. Everyone's reactions to her arriving. This is great. I love these shots. <laughs> That's Hamish there, Jesus. He had to say that. And so Rihanna, in a way to me, I'm not obviously dissing everybody else, but she to me was the star of the film. Like She stole the show as the main villain. And, you know, Rihanna is just such an amazing actress like to work with and to be around. And she just gave it her all. Like she seriously just, like when, when she showed me an audition tape of her playing this character, I just was literally like, I knew she was going to be perfect for it. And I was just so happy to get her involved and to, uh, you know, to, to, to just work on it you know I, just, I was just really happy for her to do it and uh she was very honored i mean she loved the script especially she's like i love the script i really want to do this and she was like the most excited i think out of all the other actors to uh to do the role and i was very happy about it i was very happy so i i, I mean the cast is amazing in this film and uh i always like to try and get a really good strong cast in every feature that i do um, and now my next feature, which will not no longer be The Legend of the Siren, because unfortunately most actors have decided they don't want to do it. I'm now going to do a different movie called Shadow, which is going to be another dark horror film, <coughs> uh, much darker than Pine. And um, I'm really excited about uh, about getting started on it. I'm really excited. And uh, it's definitely a follow-up um, to this. So another dark, psychological, twisted horror that will uh, be coming our way in 2023. I really, when uh, we were doing this scene, I, I love the experiments of, of the camera shots I was doing, trying to add a very dramatic effect. So the camera panning down, the camera on one side to Sammy, the other side, you know, showing just like Penelope's head, Cricket um, on his own with a notepad, writing stuff down, you know, it was just all that stuff. It was really, really um, exper uh, fun to experiment with the camera shots in this. And these, uh, these scenes where Penelope's talking about, you know, her history and everything like that, you know, there, this is a bit of backstory that we kind of added to it a little bit, but there isn't still much explained about these powers and everything. And uh, the whole therapist thing I thought was a really good idea because instead of having someone like a scientist or a doctor, might as well get somebody who can actually like just talk more about feelings rather than, you know, what we do physically and rather that we talk about emotionally and psychologically. So that was always the idea. What goes on in someone's head when they have these powers? What do they think? What do they do? What happens, you know? And, and that was the basic idea for for this, uh, for this story. We premiered Pine um, just before it's released. I think like five days before it's released or maybe even a week before. And the reception we got from Pine was very positive. Uh, the actors loved it. People loved it. Um, there were some mixed reviews on terms of, again, you know, sound and the way some of the film looks and everything. But I, I defend this look. This look that we've got now, this filter, is known as a science fiction filter. And it was really fun to use because I really wanted to uh, use this effect, this filter, because it just gives it such a massive horror vibe. I mean, uh, some people were like, I don't like it because you can't tell if it's day or if it's night or, you know, what setting's going on or the mood. But I think it gives out a really interesting mood filter to the uh, to the story, to the characters. 
Um, but some people loved the look. I remember when I released some pictures and everything, someone was like, oh my God, it looks beautiful. And I mean, I think I remember sending some showroom material to um, to April, who plays Amber in this film. And she said, oh, it looks really good. It looks good. And someone else said it looks good as well. And someone else said that it looked good. So I was really happy. I was really happy with it. I'm glad that they... Uh, I'm glad that they really did like it and um, the filter looked really good and I was really happy with it. The expressions as well that are given from Rihanna are just amazing. She really responds so well to the other actors and the characters as well. Like The, the tone of it gets really into it. And what I love as well is that you know, when you when you're in the forest and you're with uh, the, the 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 beings of the unknown, that you know it does feel really dark when you're there. Like the tone of it and the color looks dark. And then when you're with like uh, Cricket and Penelope, there's a sort of brighter atmosphere there. I kind of like how that looks because it's a kind of like a dark tone and a bright tone. And I, I I like the look of it. I think it looks really. Um, I actually like the way it just kind of feels and yeah, I'm, I'm just happy how it turned out to be honest. I love how everything just kind of panned out really. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. This scene here had to be very short and because there was a lot of dialogue in this scene and although I didn't really want to cut it out, I kind of glad that I did because it just again felt like it was dragged. It was too much going on. There was so much happening um, you know, I just didn't want it to be covered with so much dialogue. But the good thing about horror films nowadays is that it's all a build up now. Everything is a massive build up until the very big finale at the end, where you know the the horror does come and then and the death starts to happen and then everything like that. And I was really, really looking forward to um, to seeing how it does kind of pan out, you know, in a way. And uh, I think the build up to this is brilliant. Like you know, no action really begins until near the end and then you know you've got the big setup that comes and then you've got the action set up and everything and um you know that's what i really wanted i really wanted this i think when we was filming this sammy was just writing gibberish on the notepad <laughs> i think he was actually drawing stuff and you know i mean i didn't want to film him writing anything because obviously you know I didn't want him to actually write anything down, but I just think it's so funny that he looks like he's writing something, but actually when he showed me the, the notepad, he was drawing like a cat or something or a, a, a tree or so I don't know, but he was just, he was just drawing such rubbish things when he was actually, uh, you know, pretending to be writing stuff. I mean, there, you can see his hand there just look like he's writing, but he's not, <laughs> he's not writing. <laughs> The trees in Chingford as well, you know, there's a massive field outside this forest and I and I love that the trees surround it and it gives a really dark atmosphere and you've got all these characters living in the woods, you know, where everything's all kind of like going to happen. This is, this is a really good scene to show the bond of the, of the beings. So you have Jackson and, you know, Erica that, um, you know, who are together and then you've got Amber who's kind of like a daughter to Erica and she's saying to her that, you know, you're gonna be the next one to take over the group if anything happens to me and everything like that. And it's never explained what these beings are. Uh, the beings of the unknown never have to be explained. You know, they never have to be, you know, who they are, what they are. You know, it's just everything like that. Sammy done some great ad lib in here. This ad lib with the the sugar tax thing was just so funny. Um, you know, he he just had to add it in and I'm glad he did because it kind of adds to the comedy because Sammy's character is the comedy character of the whole film. You know, you have to add the, the sort of light comedy to such dark stuff. Um, and he does, he, he did, he, he just delivered it so well, the comedy, everyone was laughing at his jokes and it was just great. And I think this is definitely the best edited moment of the entire film. The, the whole opening the cans thing. Cause, uh, I had to make sure the camera was very still when I was filming these cans, and then amazingly, they it actually worked. There you go. Look at that. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And everyone, even in the cinema, was like, ooh. <laughs> Rihanna's best reaction to the echoed yes. And if you're wondering where I got a squirrel from, I was actually, a squirrel came on set and I filmed it throughout the entire thing. And uh, the reaction of the squirrel jumping up kind of added well to the whole vibration of the yes. So not only could she uh, sense it, the squirrel could also sense it. That was also quite important to add. <laughs> But um, the field as well, like if you look closely, like this is what I'm saying, the trees that surround it add such a powerful atmosphere to it to know that the beings are there and they could be watching them and, you know, and also the battle scenes that we have just work so well with the field because, you know, a field is perfect to use, as aka known as battlefields. This is one of my favourite shots of the film, you know, uh, Rihanna right in the middle of Anna and um, April. Um, it's just such a good position shot. And I love the shot here that I do this, this part where the camera pans towards Anna when she talks and then it pans to April when she talks. But you always see Rihanna's face in the center. You never take the camera off her face. And I, I just love it. Like you never, as you should see there, look, her face is still there. Even though it's half there, you can still see her face. And that's what I like. I like that the camera never cuts her face off. And I wanted to do this as an experiment. And I think this is one of the best shots of the film because it just adds such a great atmosphere here. And it just uh, shows that Erica is really focused on like what she's doing. I mean, she, it just looks incredible. I really experimented a lot with the camera more than I did with anything else. And I just think it really adds something so powerful to the scene. But what I love now is that, you know, most of my films do involve stronger women characters and weaker males, which is, you know, what most films should always have. And, and you know, Anna, Rihanna and April just added such strong, powerful women characters to this. And I knew that these three would, would be so perfect to use because, you know, these, these three aren't girly, girly characters. They're not like, you know, simple da da uh, damsels in distress. These are three tough, strong women that you know, take no shit off anybody and it, it was just good to add it into the, into the film. This is definitely one of my favourite scenes of the film. It really adds very well. People seem to laugh at that bit when they just walk past but it's just adding the atmosphere here to that, you know, they're, they're, they're like a pack of wolves. They're surrounding, they're circling and then they're going to make their move. Yeah, we kind of had to speed that little clip up because when Anna dragged Sammy down, it was more slower. So I had to speed it up a bit in the editing. <laughs> Another great little joke there. I mean, um, the joke was that, you know, he says, please just take my wallet and stuff. But he added the whole, I don't use my library card anyway, sort of thing. And um, we just, we kept that in because I just thought it was really, really funny. And again, Sammy just, you know, again, he brings light to, to, to these really dark scenes. And then, it, and then it slowly starts to get darker when um, people think that Cricket's been killed. I mean, when uh, Anna does the part where she stabs uh, Sammy, um, people in the cinema were like, no, like literally going, what are you doing? Why did you kill him off for it? <laughs> you know, and, and I was just sitting there going, oh, well, you know, because I knew, obviously I knew what was going to happen. And then when he finally comes back, you know, later on revealing he's not dead, um, people were like, hey, like there was actually an applause in the cinema. Like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like people actually got into this film. So it was really good. Kill 
kill him. And again, here we go. First big sort of action scene in the movie to set up for the big finale. And uh, this scene right here, everybody in the in the premiere, honestly, was like, like, oh my god, you know, oh my god, what's going to happen here? And you know, and like they were literally getting so into this bit. And then when this stab actually happened, like everyone went, oh, like it was great. But again, it shows what Penelope can do with her powers and, you know, what else can she... Now, this part, which is coming, was actually a proper fall. Um, I'll just not talk over it one second. <laughs> right, so... <laughs> so right there, April actually slipped when she had to stop and she slid across the field. And... Um, we loved it so much that I thought, I said to her, I am going to use that for the final. And we watched it back and we laughed and April said, yeah, you can go, yeah, go for it. And when that was premiered, everybody cracked up at that because it was a proper fall and um, it was great. I loved it. I thought it was just so funny. So we used it. I uh, just absolutely just so funny. So what we're going to do now um, is like when you see Erica there, I love how she's always focused and staring out into the distance. And that's what I always wanted. I said to, to Rihanna, your character always focuses out there, just stares into the distance, always watching, always looking. You know, in a way, she's like an eagle, just always looking around and, and just searching. And it's what we added into the film. And this part obviously shows now that Penelope is just, she just feels like she's got nothing left to lose. She's lost her best friend. She's lost her parents. And now she's like, I'm just at that stage now where I literally, I'm so depressed. I don't care what happens next. And uh, this is what, um, like when the scene happens next with the two men that come in, it shows that her anger has now reached a limit of, I will kill to, to stop anything now. Like she will kill. Um, so that's what the whole next part is uh, is focusing on. Chingford has a lovely river that always flows by. We always, uh, I always like filming the river, especially when it's all nice and filled up. Jaden here brought his own mask and his own weapons like for the films and it was great. I loved it. I'm so glad he done that. When he put that mask on and he wore it, I, I absolutely loved it. I think Jaden honestly did such a fantastic job playing his character of Jackson and I was just so happy to uh, to have him on board to, to do that. That's what I'm saying. He was just fantastic. And the fact when he brought the mask and showed me, I was like, mate, you have got to wear that. It is perfect. It really adds such a like a stronger, um, dark atmosphere for his character. So Ray Neville and Bo Anthony that play these two guys, um, obviously the scene is to show, as I said, Penelope's rage has, has lost it. I wanted these uh, guys to come in because um, the two men are a symbol to show that, you know, these guys, you know, even though they're human, they, they don't care like what's going on and, you know, they're being horrible and, you know, this is to show that Penelope is now at that stage where she just doesn't care now. And then she's not going to take any crap off anyone, especially these two men that have a gun and they're uh, sort of harassing her in a way. Did you see that? No, I felt it. Again, also Bo bringing a bit of a comedy atmosphere to the scene. This is probably one of my little favourite moments. Uh, the whole walking up, putting the gun to the head moment, which was like, oh my God, what's going to happen here? Oh, 
<laughs> Ray's little iconic moment there with it. The, oh fuck! Um, Ray, Ray and Bo were great though to, to do this little bit. I mean, they actually done their part within one hour. We they they apparently weren't able to to hang around for too long, but they were available on the same day just to come down, do their part, and then just go off. And um, they they nailed it so well. This was actually the very first scene that we shot for the entire film. This was the very first scene that we did, and. Um, you know, they both were just great. You know, they're great sports. I like working with them both, and it was great to have them on board to play these uh, these characters. I couldn't film Ray for too much, though, because although he was supposed to be playing dead, you could still see him breathing, which was so annoying. So I had to chop filming his body because he was breathing so much, even though he was supposed to be dead. So I had to quickly cut him out very quickly because um, I didn't want to show that he was still breathing. But he was just like, his belly was going... Up and down so much on the ground. Hamish's shirt matches the leaves so much. Great camouflage. This is a great scene. I love this part because this is a very silent moment, atmosphere kind of film uh, scene uh, where, you know, it's all silent. The wind is blowing. You know, Penelope's out there somewhere. She's ready to hunt them down. And you've got these three literally just like searching around looking for Penelope and like, you know, all kind of... Uh, all kind of kicks off. And uh, I just love the intensity here. I remember in the cinema, it was dead quiet. And I was just watching, thinking, what is going to go on? What is happening? What is happening? In fact, the last ever shot that I filmed for this, for this, for this film was Jaden Scenes. Like the bit here and when he's wearing the mask, this, this was like the final parts that I shot of the film. And, um, you know, we actually went out on a very hot day in Chingford getting these scenes done and he was fantastic. And this is a great little stunt moment from Hamish. Actually looks like he's been shot. I love it. <laughs> At least Hamish didn't see he was breathing, unlike Ray. <laughs> yeah, that, that movement there in the grass was to show uh, April's character kind of running through the grass really quickly and it just launches out of uh, to, to grab Penelope. This death, though, was quite fun because I thought, instead of, because originally the, it was going to show Penelope shooting... Um, Amber right here and there on camera, but I thought it'd actually be interesting if Penelope just slowly rose the gun and then just went bang and we didn't see the death because it just adds a good effect here, right there. I just love that. And then all of a sudden, I thought I really wanted to add some crows to it and some ravens like flying around and you know, and so we um, I added some like crow effects here. There you go, and then um, also in the sky and everything like that. So I added all this, yeah. I just love that transition. It's just so good. And now we have the final battle between Penelope and um, Erica, which I love. This is one of my favourite scenes as well. Um, but 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 again, Rihanna, she she just delivered it so well. Like her face expressions, the powerfulness. Like, and I love that part as well where Maria walked in, like with a gun. It was really good. It was a great shot. But. This part here just adds such manipulation and suspense. Because when you look at Rihanna here, it just shows that you don't know what she's going to do. You know she's going to do something, but you don't know what she's going to do. And that's what adds the suspense to it. And when Rihanna gives out the best face expression, her eyes are locked on her. It's just perfect. It's just the suspense of it is amazing.
had to again clip very quick because Rihanna had to grab Maria very quickly. Um, but I, I, I love um, because Rihanna does a lot of stunt work and fights and stuff. So she was very good with the whole, you know, I'm going to grab like how to grab people and how to do almost everything. She was just so perfect. And then we added like I added like a little sound effect here to hear what the, these beings of the unknown sound like. So there was a bit of a roar there. So you know that these characters are not human. And crickets reveal. There you go. This is when everybody was clapping. Yeah, he's alive and woohoo! And <laughs> I think this was like the only time they actually did applaud. And of course, when the film had ended, they applauded, but not as much as Sammy's reveal that he was alive. That's a fantastic shot right there. Proper James Bond little moment right there. And of course, we had Steve's last moment. Oh, <laughs> and I realise as well, poor Steve doesn't really have much to do with this film, does he? Really, bless him. But uh, but it's fine, you know. His character wasn't really like the top of of the of the others. You know, mostly the stories about Erica and Penelope and Cricket. You know, they're like the main character story arcs. And then, of course, you've got the group and the side characters as well to add the effects. And it just kind of you know gives the whole story a basis. Again, Sammy great does. I mean, Sammy actually this bit here when Rihanna had to pretend to strangle him. Sammy actually went like he, he actually almost strangled himself. Like he, I don't know why, because he puts his hand there and he actually almost tried to strangle himself. <laughs> I was like, don't actually try and kill yourself. It's only acting. <laughs> and he actually almost did. I think he literally took this role way too seriously. <laughs> Rihanna had to break the fourth wall there she was like can I please break the fourth wall and say this and, uh, and she'd done it and I loved it in fact people thought it was great they said you know it adds a great great uh, great bit of humour to it I love how she pushes Chris Sammy I, I think Sammy was supposed to move I did tell him to move but he didn't so, she, so Rihanna had to push him away <laughs> even though I told him like three times he's got to move out the shot he didn't go <laughs> oh well and this is one of my like best effects I added on here this is you know Pine coming out of Penelope and her using it and then obviously I thought right how am I going to use her death scene so again you know we don't show the death but we do you know we do see it so you know Now how he done that is I added, there was a picture there and I added the effect there. You know, I used the picture to show her death, used her scream as an echo and then used the sound effect to show that she's either been exploded or sucked away or, you know, but she's, she's gone. She's gone. She's not coming back. <laughs> or is she? So obviously the ending, right, it's left open-ended. People are saying to me, is there going to be a sequel? Is there going to be a sequel to, to Pine? All I can say is, there's not going to be a movie sequel, but I have got a little series idea that I'd like to do as a spin-off sequel. And uh, I do have a couple of people in mind that I would like to come back for the for the series and stuff. So it's going to be a Pine 2, but it's going to be a series rather than a movie. And it will be coming out probably, hopefully, for next year. But yeah, it's left open-ended, so we're going to continue it on with a little series. Uh, I don't know how many episodes. I don't know if it'll be three or four, but it's going to... It's going to add on. It's going to add a great effect to it. So I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really excited about it. But at least you know now that Penelope doesn't have the powers anymore. She's going to move on from it. You know, she's no longer got them, and she'll probably be no longer uh, in the series or the target or anything like that. But I do have plans for what I want to do with the series and what will happen and what's going to come. And so it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to doing it. And this little ending here I have, I love this little ending because you, you've got the shows of the sides of the characters show that who's been killed. And, you know, it's kind of like a little sort of tribute -y kind of thing to them to say, oh, you know, this is the end. They've all been killed. They're all gone. They're no longer there. And, you know, it's it's all over. And it's, you know, that's what you kind of think. 
And then, of course, you've got this last little moment with uh, Jaden's character, Jackson. And then you're kind of left with, oh, hang on a minute. What's going to happen here? So, again, more suspense. Look at the field. Empty space. Oh, yeah, you know, wind's blowing. And then we cut close to Jaden. And then we get this little opening intro. And now you're going to think, what's going to happen next? So, yeah, spin-off sequel, which will be coming. Uh, thanks for listening to my audio commentary, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Um, I enjoyed making the film. Thank you to everybody who was involved. They were all amazing. And uh, thanks to everybody who supports the films that I do. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And, uh, yeah, look forward to more audio commentaries and more projects very soon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys soon. Bye.